Hi everybody. So, with the uh, with the with the finalization of the new stiff ooh, pardon me, stiffeners and doublers and all that, we can now get on to more important matters, which is finalizing, getting everything prepped and ready and deburred and uh, dimpled, primed, and riveted. So, anyway, in this video, we're going to be prepping everything, including, uh, uh, so all the holes have been deburred, which we saw in a couple of videos ago. Had those deburred while the, uh, while the skins were mounted up to the ribs still. So all, everything is deburred hole-wise. Now we're just kind of doing the edges, which you saw me doing at the end of the last video. And now I'm just kind of finishing up those here, and then we will be dimpling. No, but first, so here I'm adding, so I'm adding a little bit of a break. So, something I may have not gone into before, I don't know if I've really talked about it, is every once in a while the, the instructions tell you to add a little bit of a break to one of the edges of the skins. And that includes just basically bending the last, oh, I don't know, a little bit less than half, a per, uh, half an inch, uh, of the metal just so that it lays down better right so all these skins are going to go on top of the ribs and they're going to attach the spars but you also don't want them to kind of curl up at the end you want them to kind of sit flush so you put like a little seven degree break to that last half inch of the skin and that's what you saw me doing there with i've got some three inch uh, uh seaming pliers that uh, normally you would use for something like um, they're made for basically bending sheet metal, like gutters and things like that, but it works perfectly good with aircraft aluminum. So, a little tool that uh, people haven't seen in a long time. Here's the handy DRDD2 back out in action. Dimpling away at all the skins. Uh, as always, I'm not using it to dimple every single hole in the skins. I'm only using it to dimple the holes that need the DRDD2 to be dimpled. That doesn't make any sense. So anywhere that I can use the rivet squeezer, I'm going to use the rivet squeezer to dimple. And you're going to see me pull that sucker out here in a little bit because it's magic. Uh, if you don't have that, then you need, because, you know, because the throw on the rivet squeezer is, what, three inches? Uh, the throw on this thing is much bigger. So this is for dimpling all the middle stuff. And normally I would have had this dimpler up on my workbenches, but that's where I've got the ribs and everything. Well, not the ribs. That's where I've got the wing. I got the spar. I got yeah. Okay, it's the ribs. So I just thought I'll just set up on one of these temporary folding tables, and then to help out with actually holding the skin, I just got an office chair to kind of do the job for me. Yep, and so now, so that was all the hard work. In dimpling, you kind of do the, you don't do the low-hanging fruit. You do the tough stuff first. Then you get to finish off with the easy things. Ugh, yeah, that's not a pain in the ass. So... The only thing, and I know I've gone over this before, the only thing I don't like about that rivet squeezer, because it's got the adjustable yoke, is you, you've, you've got to go back and re-tighten it, because it will eventually just unwind itself. As you're pushing tremendously between the two dies, it will just slowly unscrew that uh, adjustable yoke up. And so with both of the skins now uh, completely dimpled, 
Now we go through and we dimple the front flanges of the ribs. So you didn't do these before. Before you actually put the ribs up into the main uh, spar, you went and you dimpled the bottom flanges. And you didn't dimple the top, and I always thought that was peculiar. Uh, so now is when you go and you dimple the front. And now I've gone ahead and primed, which you uh, got didn't get to see. That's off camera. And there you can see both doublers are primed and ready to go. Only, hmm, did I put those doublers on straight? No, I didn't. So now with everything primed and everything's dimpled, it's go time. Why didn't I put them on straight the first time? Because I'm an idiot. A little note about uh, clecoing the skins and stuff on. This is not the time when you skimp on the clecos. So I think if I'm correct, I bought a bag of 400 clecos, and over time, a few have gone away the dodo or or have you know broken or just become useless or I've lost them there's probably like 15 sitting under that bench that you can't find uh, you got to use them all you want to have all of as many points in this skin dimpled dimpled sorry clear coat as possible because you want that skin to be as tight as you can uh, especially in the front so in the front leading edge what you see me click going up there uh, that's where you actually put that kind of break that we were talking about because you know it's it's kind of curving over at that point and you want it to be tight and that's the one place where the skin will not bubble but it will uh, it, it, it needs the most secure uh, the most security it needs the most clicos and so that's very important uh, I've got basically my entire buckets empty I've got every single 330 second clico that I've got in the front of that wing and in the next video, uh, me and my buddy Ted are actually going to uh, get on with the riveting of this stuff on. So I will see you soon.